Madeira has come onto the diesel heater scene and released some great heaters with features often only found in more expensive units. I'm going to be reviewing two heaters today, the Madeira M55 Evo H and the M55 Ultra. I'll go through all their features, the differences between the two, performance, my personal experience with both heaters, and if I can recommend Madeira in a crowded field of diesel heaters. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's start with features that both of these units share. So high efficiency, eight kilowatt output, 12 and 24 volt DC power input, 110 volt AC, wired thermostat, wireless remote, Bluetooth mobile app control, and the exhaust coming out the side for easy muffler install. All right, so now let's get to the really good stuff. Both units have auto altitude adjustment. At higher elevations, standard diesel heaters can't compensate for the thinner air, and they either run too rich or they won't start at all. These Madeira heaters automatically adjust their air fuel mix to compensate for the thinner air. You can see the elevation right on the display. Another great feature both share is carbon monoxide detection. So if there are unsafe levels of carbon monoxide, the heater will set off an alarm and emergency shutdown. That's super cool. Think about it. The airspace in a rooftop tent, it's not that large and it wouldn't take much to hit dangerous levels of carbon monoxide in a very short amount of time if God forbid something went wrong. So to have this safety feature built in is huge peace of mind. Now in order to use the thermostat and carbon monoxide detection feature, you have to have a tethered remote well in your tent. The unit ships with a short cord, but both units come with a five foot extension cable. It's really simple to install. Just open up the unit, find the connector and unplug it and plug the extension in line. Really easy. But for me, it's honestly still a little bit too short, but you can find longer extension cables on Amazon. I've got links to everything mentioned in this video down in the description. Oh, and quick tip, you'll want the remote somewhere in your tent that doesn't have the heater hose blowing hot air directly on it if you're using the thermostat mode. All right, just a quick heads up. Madeiro did reach out to me and sent me these units to test, but they didn't pay me and I can say whatever I want in this review. I actually asked Madeiro if they'd give me some exclusive coupon codes to pass on to you and they gladly obliged. So you can get 18% off the Evo H and 15% off the Ultra, and that's valid through the end of 2025. I've got the coupon codes in the description below. So if you're watching this review later, just check and see if the coupon code is available. Also, do me a favor. If you purchase either of these heaters, please use the links below. I do get a small commission through Amazon and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And that allows me to keep making content like this. Okay, so how much do these cost? So MSRP on the Evo H is $249.99, but it's currently on sale for $215.99. The Ultra retails for $289.99, but it's on sale for $249.99. And with those exclusive coupon codes, you'll save another like 38 bucks give or take some change. So if you like either of these, I'd honestly jump on this deal. Again, the coupon code's good through the end of 2025. And diesel heaters tend to go in and out of stock pretty regularly. It just kind of is what it is with diesel heaters. So jump on it now. Okay, so let's jump back into it and see if either of these Madeira heaters are what you're looking for. So we've covered what's the same between these two. Now let's cover the differences. So first and foremost, it goes without saying, the Ultra just looks a lot cooler. In a sea of heaters that all look strikingly similar, the Ultra really does stand out. I really like the matte orange, and it appears to be powder coated versus the gloss paint of the Evo. I think the Ultra's coating is gonna hold up to scratches quite a bit better than the Evo. Also, the steel housing on the Ultra is heavier gauge steel, it's stout. The Evo's still good, it's standard, but you can already see that it got bent here. I honestly don't recall hitting it on anything. I'd definitely tell you if I did. So I think it might have come that way out of the box. To me, it's no big deal, it's just cosmetic, but I did wanna point that out. And while we're on the topic of the box, these are really nice. It's not just a blank cardboard box that's torn and has holes in it like I've seen more times than not. So I do appreciate the sharp packaging. And the packing is really good as well. So good that I wonder if that ding on the Evo came from the factory, I, I don't know. And while we're talking from the factory, I do wanna point this out on the Ultra. So. I normally don't crack these heaters open, but I wanted to see the internal layout of the Ultra. I don't know why, I just did, and I'm really glad I listened to my curiosity. I proceeded to take off the 16 screws holding this housing on, and that's not all of them, by the way. But when I opened it up, I noticed that the fuel line was not connected to the fuel tank. <laughs> Ouch. If I had just filled it like I normally would, I would have had diesel fuel spilling all over the place from the inside of this unit with no way to stop it. <laughs> it would have been really bad. Now, 
It looked like the fuel line was never connected. And the way I can tell is the fuel tank connector is barbed so the tube didn't just slip off in shipping or anything like that. And if it was attached at the factory and came off, I'd see markings on the fuel line, no doubt. So I installed the fuel line and I'm here to tell you, it's really hard to put on and it's definitely not coming off anytime soon. That thing is on there. The other thing that I noticed on both of these units was the fan made some noise like it was rubbing or hitting the plastic housing. Okay, so it looks like this was just screwed on a little tight. Something, it's fine now. There's some plastic there. It's an easy fix. Just backed it off a little bit. The injection molding on the fan shroud has some rough edges and they were rubbing on the fan. It sounded way worse than it actually was. So I just unscrew the fan shroud a bit, problem solved. I may go back and file off those rough edges at some point, but we'll see. So after finding these issues, I definitely spun myself down a rabbit hole. I thought, man, if they miss these things, what else is wrong? I fully disassembled the Ultra and the Evo looking for any other issues, and both were good to go. But I still had some apprehension, and let's be brutally honest here. I'm guessing that most of these diesel heaters, regardless of brand, all probably come from the same couple factories. And what that means is Madeira isn't necessarily gonna have a higher incidence of quality control issues. Uh, honestly, I'm guessing that somebody at the factory just had a bad day and could have easily missed a step on a Madeira heater or an H calorie or whatever. My point is I think this could have happened on any heater regardless of brand. And just know after a thorough teardown and a couple really simple fixes, they both run flawlessly now. And just note, I'm always gonna be honest with you and let you know the good and the bad. I'm always gonna put myself in your shoes. So, would I spend my own money on either of these heaters or suggest them to other people? The short answer is, yeah, absolutely. Let me know in the comments if you think that this was just a fluke or if you've seen this kind of thing with other heaters. All right, so let's get on with it. The Ultra has a larger three and a half inch heater port versus the standard three inch found on the Evo. The larger opening allows for a larger heater hose. Awesome, right? But if you look on Amazon for a three and a half inch hose, you're gonna come up empty and frustrated. The standard sizes are three inch and four inch. So why'd they go with a three and a half? <laughs> I honestly have no idea, but don't worry. You can easily just use a four inch heater hose. They fit just fine. Now, all these units come with those uninsulated hard lines that tend to be really short and pretty much are useless. So I just chuck those and get insulated heater hose. I like to get these hose clamps with thumb screws for easier installation, where you don't need a screwdriver. So the larger opening on the Ultra allows you to run your heater at a higher temp setting. If you try and run the Evo or any other heater with a standard three inch opening on higher temps past say like one or two, the unit will auto shut down because it's overheating. The back pressure from the small airspace of the rooftop tent coupled with the smaller diameter three inch hose is what causes this. So with a four inch hose, you just have more airflow and air space. You can run the heater at a higher temp setting. Now, the Ultra also comes with this really cool ducted splitter. So this goes from a three and a half inch opening down to two three inch hoses. So now you can run each line to different tents and vary the airflow between them or run both hoses into the same tent and have dual heater vents. That is really hot. <laughs> so these two units are very similar in size. They're both approximately 15 by 10 by 10. The Ultra is a little taller, but also slightly narrower. Here are the exact dimensions if you're trying to fit one of these units into a tight space or something. But as you can see, both are really close in size to each other. Both units have external fuel gauges, which is really nice. The fuel tanks are slightly different shapes, but they look to be about the same volume. I tried to figure out the exact fuel capacities of each, but I honestly couldn't find any info on it. So they hold about that much. <laughs> also note that the Evo heater says it's 38% more efficient and the Ultra is 50% more efficient. More efficient than what you may ask. Again, I honestly don't know. I, I couldn't find any details on that either. Now, I've seen this exact same graphic from a number of different heater companies, so I'm assuming that they're more efficient than last year's model. And I can tell you that this new crop of heaters are definitely more fuel and power efficient. I'm seeing eight kilowatt heat output for five kilowatt fuel and power usage. So keep that in mind. The numbers really do seem to add up. 
The air intake on the Evo is on the bottom, but there's plenty of clearance to attach the air intake line and air filter. I'm gonna be honest, I don't always attach the air filter, but it does quiet the unit down quite a bit and you don't run the risk of it sucking in dirt or anything. The air intake on the Ultra resides inside the unit itself, so all you have to attach is the exhaust, so setup is a bit faster and easier on the Ultra. The metal exhaust hose on the Ultra is much nicer. The Evo just comes with the standard exhaust line I've found on every other diesel heater I've seen. The Ultra's exhaust line seems to be a bit heavier gauge metal. Now, I've never had any issues whatsoever with a standard line, so I honestly don't know if it's truly any better, but it does look cooler and it's clearly more robust. The handle on the Evo is metal and it flips up. It's really sturdy. On the Ultra, you've basically got a plastic handle that's got some kind of spring retention to hold it. I honestly don't know why they didn't flip that. I do like the metal handle a little bit better, but it's really not that big of a deal. Both units come with the same wired control pad that includes a thermostat and carbon monoxide sensor. The display looks really cool and it's very intuitive for the most part. You press and hold the power button to turn it on and off. It has a manual mode where you can set the temp setting one through 10. And then it has an automatic mode, which is basically thermostat mode. You set a target temp and the unit will adjust the output accordingly. This mode is really nice. It'll hold a more constant temp so you won't go from cold to waking up in a sweat lodge. So thermostat mode is definitely the way to go. To get to settings, you press OK and then use the arrows to scroll up and down. Then press OK again to select. Again, all that makes sense. But here's a tip. To go back, you press and hold OK. That one took me a sec. So both units have a mobile app, but at the time of the making of this video, it was only available for iOS. The Android link didn't work. So I'm guessing the Android app will be available any day now. Let's get to my biggest pet peeve of almost all diesel heaters, the fuel caps. Budget diesel heaters come with those terrible blue caps that leak. Now, if you're using a diesel heater to heat your garage or something like that, then those blue caps are fine. But if you off-road and fuel sloshing around, those caps will leak, and sometimes they will leak very badly. So the Ultra comes with a heavy-duty cap that has a spring-loaded vent valve. That cap doesn't leak at all. The Evo comes with a black cap, but it looks like the vent is better than you'll find on blue caps. So it's a step up. So how do these heaters perform? They put out great heat and don't smoke or give off any diesel smell. Now, like all diesel heaters, the first time you start them up, it might smoke a bit, and that's normal. That's just burning off machining oil from manufacturing. But after that, neither of these smoked at all. Both units are quiet, they're pretty average. You can hear the fuel pump ticking and they have a fair bit of fan noise, but they fall right in line with similar heaters. The noise isn't bad. And when you're a couple feet away from the unit, especially if you're up in your tent, it's not very noticeable. I will say there are heaters that are more soundproofed and you can't hear the fuel pump tick at all. Again though, the Madeira unit sits smack in the middle. The Ultra is slightly quieter, but not enough to make it a huge standout on this feature alone. So what's the final verdict on the Madeira M55 Evo H and the M55 Ultra? Would I buy one? When you can find one on sale, and especially with a coupon code, these diesel heaters deliver a lot of high-end features for a very competitive price. For instance, other units with high altitude mode can cost upwards of $600. So for around $200, these heaters should definitely get a solid look. Both of these heaters sit in a really good middle range in terms of price. Sure, there's cheaper diesel heaters, but the M55 series from Maduro really balances out costs and great features. And yeah, I had some issues out of the box, but again, I think it was just a fluke and there were some fast and easy fixes. So which one should you get? I personally think for just a little bit more, the Ultra not only looks cooler, it is really one of the sharpest diesel heaters I've seen, but more importantly, has some extra features and it's just a sturdier build quality to make it worth the extra 40-ish dollars. So let me know what you think. Leave me a comment if you think Maduro heaters are worth it and which one you might get. And do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe. And again, if you decide to pick either of these heaters up, do me a favor and hit the link in the description and be sure to grab the coupon code as well. So be sure to get out there, hit the trails, and don't let the cold weather slow you down when you're exploring what's over the ridge.